there's nothing worth more that can ever come close nothing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where your heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord the Holy Spirit you are welcome here come back place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit Holy Spirit you are well Flood this place through the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become of Your presence. Let us experience the glory of Your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come this place and feel. glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Lord your presence
He's awakening the hope in me. He is my Lord, my destiny. He's breathing life into my soul. I will thirst for Him and Him alone. He has come like the rain showers on barren plain so my heart tongue confess Jesus Christ the hope of man my hope steadfast I will not be I'm anchor never shaking all my hope is in you hope is in you God I am steadfast I will not be an anchor never shaken all my hope is in you your awakening your awakening the hope in me you are my Lord my destiny your Christ, hope of man. When my hope is in you, God, I am steadfast. I will not be. I'm anchor, never shame. heart to the broken sharing your home with the orphan you are my joy you are my joy you are the hope for the nation the father's heart will embrace you you are the song we declare you are the joy you are the joy When my 
says in this world you will have trouble but take heart I have overcome the world in 1 John 5 he says everyone who is born of God overcomes the world
thank you and praise you just like the verse says that you have overcome the world so no matter what troubles we are going through all the stuff that's going on in the world right now lord we have the the faith in you that you are gonna you are better than this you are going to win lord in the end and so i just lift up anybody that doesn't know you lord that is watching this i just pray that that your words are just comes out of breath and just works in the hearts of people. And we love you, Lord. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to share your truth and share it with the world, Lord. And so I just lift up Brett. I just pray that you work through him. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, hello, church. Today we're continuing our study 
about the Waymaker. And last week, the last few weeks as we've gone through this, um, we have been looking at uh, different aspects of who the Waymaker is. Last week we said that Jesus makes a way for us to love others. And during this time of crisis, during this time of virus, the things that are going on around us, it's truly important that we reach out to others, that we apply the truths that we find in the scriptures here. So just a quick review from last week as we looked at this. We find that um, what Jesus is saying in, ver- in chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17 is only recorded here in the Gospels. And he says in John chapter 15 and verse 5, he says that I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. <laughs> Apart from me, you can do nothing. We found out last week that the way maker makes a way for us to grow. We found that in verses 1 through 8, and that way is to remain in him. If we want to grow, we need to remain. We must stay connected to the vine. We talked about the vine last week. We talked about how Jesus is the vine and we are the branches and that the Father is the gardener and that he will take care of you. (laughs) Think about that in the middle of what we're going through right now. Our Father promises us that he will take care of us. He'll prune us when he needs to. We don't like that very much. But he causes us to grow in this pruning, this cutting back, this cleaning of us causes us to grow. And when he says, apart from me, you can do nothing, we're reminded that when we are cut off from the vine, we will not produce fruit. So as we look at that this morning, we find out that when we stay connected, we will see results. Stay connected to the vine and you will see results as, as believers, as Christ followers here. When we f- go away from him, when we fall away, when we walk away, there's little growth that happens. In fact, no growth can happen. But as we stay connected to him, we bear much fruit. We found out also that the Waymaker makes a way for relationships to thrive. Don't you love it? When God is the one who provides us with those relationships. And in the church, we in the church, these relationships are so precious to us. It is so hard for us not to gather together, for us not to give hugs to one another, for us not to give the high five, you know, to to do the, the air five just doesn't go as far for us. We enjoy those, those times when we can hug on each other, when we can love on each other, when we can be a part of each other. So as we look at this, we find that relationships thrive in an atmosphere of unconditional love. And where there is love, where there is love, the Father is at work. And as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, John chapter 14 says, or John chapter 15 says, and then, and then he says, remain in my love. We need to live out of the Father's resources. We need to stay connected, and we will experience joy. In verse 11, he says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete, may be filled to capacity. That's what that word made complete. It means that you are filled, overflowing with the love of God. And this joy comes from a place of complete and unconditional love. Jesus said, you did not choose me. (laughs) You didn't choose me. He said, I chose you. And I appointed you so that you may go and you may bear fruit, fruit that will last. And he says this, this is my command that you love one another. Finally, last week as we were looking at it, we saw that the way maker makes a way for the world to know him, to know him intimately and deeply. When the advocate or the Holy Spirit comes, he will testify about me. That's what Jesus says. When the Holy Spirit is there, he's going to be the one who proclaims who I am. And not only that, but Jesus says you must also. You are not alone in this, in other words. You must also testify. (laughs) you got somebody right alongside of you, coming alongside of you, so stay connected. You're going to be a blessing. As long as you stay connected to the vine, you will bear fruit. And that is who you are. We can't help but bear fruits. 
We also find that this week in John chapter 16, as we look at this, verse 33, the last verse says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. In this world you're going to have trouble. Does that sound like today? He was talking over 2,000 years ago, and his word is, applies today just as much as it did then. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. And he says this, I have overcome. Here's where you can take heart. Because Jesus says, I have overcome the world. I've overcome any virus. I've overcome every, every disease known to man. In fact, I am here. I am an overcomer. And because you are in me, you are an overcomer. That's, that's chapter 16. But as we break this down, the way maker will always lead us. Always lead us to truth. Jesus Christ is truth himself. And he always leads us to that truth as we're staying connected to the vine. He says, all this I have told you so that you will not fail. You'll not fall away, he says. What is he talking about? All of this I told you? Well, all of the stuff that he just previously got done saying. All of what? All this business about the vine and the branches, about staying connected, about the Father's love for us, about how we should love each other, about bearing fruit, about telling others about God's love. That's what he's talking. All of this I have told you. That's all of this. In this world, do you have trouble? <laughs> Been there, done that, right? <laughs> We're in the middle of it, in fact. Look what Jesus says about trouble. Oh, I'm just going to read this portion to you. As he tells us in John chapter 16, they will put you out of the synagogue. Sounds like trouble to me. How about you? A place where they were going. Can we witness to that? We are no longer in the place where we normally gathered. <laughs> We've been put out of the synagogue. So we're in a room here looking at what God has for us. We're online. We're doing things different. But Jesus said, you'll be put out of the synagogue. Sounds like trouble. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. We see that happening around the world today. Amen? This wasn't just going on back then. You think about this. Think about what Saul was doing to the Christians. God got a hold of him, changed his name, and it became Paul, the great apostle. Trouble? Yeah, you're being killed. That's trouble, right? (laughs) They will do such things because they have not known the Father or they have not known me. Sounds like trouble to me. I have told you this. Because they have not known the Father in me, I've told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember what I warned you about them. (laughs) Sounds like trouble. With a capital T, right? Name, none of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. Trouble? (laughs) They're in big trouble. They're struggling with all this. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Oh, wait a minute, God. Wait a minute, Jesus. You're going away? Does that not not sound like trouble to you? However, our Father makes a way for us to know truth, to know Jesus himself. Look what else Jesus says. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. Truth? Jesus is proclaiming truth because he is truth. In fact, he's sending another truth sayer to you, which is the advocate or the Holy Spirit. But he says, but if I go, I will send him to you. Truth. When he comes, he will provide the world. He will prove to the world to be, the, uh, to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Is the world in the wrong today about sin and righteousness and what judgment? They don't have a clue what righteousness is. We know, we know that righteousness is simply a right standing with our creator. The world thinks it's something totally different. They think it's as judgment or as that thumb squelching out all of our joy. That's not what truth is. That's not what righteousness is all about. About righteousness because I'm going to be the father where you can see me no longer. He's just sharing truth with them. About judgment because the prince of this world now stands, I love this, he stands condemned. He's going to try to do his best to kill, steal, and destroy. (laughs) But the truth is he stands condemned already. 
I have much more to say to you more than you can bear now. And when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will only speak what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from you and all that belongs to the father is mine. That is why I said the spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Truth. That's the Holy Spirit. When the spirit of truth comes, the Holy Spirit himself, he's the one who will guide you into all the truth that the father is. The identity of the Holy Spirit is truth. He is truth in essence. He is truth in himself. In a world today when we say that we find our own truth by what we believe about ourselves, we don't, that can't be true. It's got to be something higher than us because all of us has a different perception of what the world is. There is only one truth, and that is the truth provided us by Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who indwells this, the Father of truth. He will guide us. He will lead us. He will instruct us. He will teach us into divine truth, the Father's truth. In this world, you have trouble, but. In this world, you have trouble, but. Take heart. Take heart. We sang about that. He has overcome the world. He is an overcomer, and because you are in him, and I am in him, and he is in us, we are overcomers as well. Jesus went on to say, in a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. What's he talking about? He's talking about very shortly coming up in the same week that he's teaching, in the same time that he's teaching the apostles here, the disciples here, that the crucifixion was just a few short hours away. Wasn't going to be long now. Some of the disciples said to one another, what in the world is he talking about? Uh, you won't find that in any of the translations. That's my interpretation. What in the world is he talking about? When he says, in a little while you will see me no more, and then in a little while you will see me again because I'm going to the Father. They kept asking. They kept on asking over and over, what does he mean by a little while? They still didn't have a clue. They were still confused. And need, need I say that we would be as confused as they are if we had been there as well. So Jesus saw that they, that they wanted to ask him about this. Jesus being about relationships. Jesus being so perceptive, he saw what was going on in their heart, lives and what, they're, what they were struggling with. And he says, are you asking one another what it means, what I meant when I said this? Are you really asking each other? In a little while, you will see me no more. And then in a little while, you will see me again. <laughs> Jesus says this. I want you to tune in to what he's saying. Look, he says, listen, I am going to be truthful with you. Very, verily, I say to you. He says, I am going to be truthful with you right now. You will weep and you will mourn while the world rejoices. There are going to be some rejoice when you're in the midst of struggle when you're in trouble they will rejoice because of what you're going through they will rejoice because you they feel like you have been put in your place <laughs> they will rejoice the disciples were confused and they were trying to make sense of what Jesus was saying but here's what we know to be true anytime you struggle Come to that place. What do I know to be true? What do I know? What did I gnosko know? That Greek word that talks about intimacy. What do I truly know to be true? They were confused. Listen to this. The way maker will always lead us to joy. The way maker will always lead us to joy. Look what he says. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned to joy. Then he paints them a picture. Love how the Father does this. Love how Jesus Christ does this. 
A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that the child, that a child has been born into this world. Does that sound familiar, ladies? Us guys can't relate to that, but you can if you've had kids. And then he says, so it is with you. Now is your time of grief. Now is your time of struggle. But when I see you again, you will rejoice. Then say you might. He says, you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. They can't rob you of your joy because it is given to us by God himself. You are filled with his joy. Jesus is talking about his death and his, crucif- his res- crucifixion, his resurrection. And in verse 23, he says, in that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked me for anything. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. That's what he's saying here. Listen to this. Keep this in context. Don't think you can ask for anything. Lord, I sure would like a million dollars. That's not what he's talking about here. Keep this in context as you're looking at this passage, as you're receiving God's word. Look at what he's saying. He's saying, when I am no longer with you, when I am no longer here, that's the context of what's going on. He says, you will have an advocate. Who will be with you 24-7? You will not be able to escape the Holy Spirit that I am sending. He will be your helper right there alongside of you, within you. He will be your guide. Not only that, he will be your teacher. He will be your comforter. And yes, in the middle of the trouble that we're talking about here, he will be your peace giver. He will be the one who gives you peace in the midst of the storm, in the midst of struggle. Our Father gives us a reason to rejoice. We have, can you imagine what it must have been like before the Holy Spirit came into play in the lives of believers? Hopelessness? Yeah. Trouble? You talk about trouble. You know, you talk about fear the things that they must have gone through. We don't know what it's like not to have the Holy Spirit. Those of us that have been believers for a long period of time, they were going to get this advocate. Our Father gives us a reason to rejoice because he will never, we will never, ever, 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 ever be alone again. Never be alone again. Through Jesus' death and his burial and his resurrection, we have a new relationship with God. It is not a relationship based on performance. It is a relationship based on life. That's what the relationship is. A relationship with the Father. Think about this. A relationship with God, the creator, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the ones who created you and I, the ones who created everything that we know we will have a relationship with him verse 25 though i have been speaking figuratively (laughs) a time is coming when i will no longer use this kind of language but will tell you plainly about my father in that day you will ask in my name i am not saying that i will ask the father on your behalf here's a good thing no longer do you have to go through anybody else. He said, no, lo- no, the Father himself loves you. I want you to think about that word. That is unconditional love. That is agape love. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I come from the Father and entered the world now. I am leaving the world, and I am going back to the Father. Trouble? In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. What's he say? I will overcome the world. 
finally, the way maker will always lead us to peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Look what the disciples say next. <laughs> Listen to this. Now you're speaking clearly. Listen to what they're saying now. Now, aha, I see it. Now you're speaking clearly without figures of speech. We can see that you know all things and you don't even have to ask anyone or have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. I can't help but thinking that right here, the Holy Spirit entered them at this point and that they were able to see clearly what God was saying. You know, throughout the Old Testament, the, old, the Holy Spirit would appear. He would come down. He would appear on people for a short time, but he would not live in them. I think this was a glimpse into what was going to be. They were able to hear clearly. They were able to see, or see clearly. So Jesus asked them, <laughs> do you now believe? I think Jesus saw that spirit of God coming in and dwelling in them and taking up a residence in them. And so he says, now, do you believe me now? The time is coming. In fact, listen to this. A time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered, each of you to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone. Who's he talking about? He's talking about God the Father, God the Holy Spirit being a part of him. And even though sometimes we feel alone, let me say this. As we get more and more isolated to protect our country of this virus, to protect our friends and our family members, as we become more and more secluded or in our homes, remember this. You are never alone. You are never alone because we have the Holy Spirit of God living in us. And if the Holy Spirit of God is living in us, then who else is living there? God, the Father himself is in us. I am not alone. My Father was with me, Jesus says. I have told you these things. He's speaking very plainly. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. How many of you today have gone through the ups and downs of trying to figure out what is going on? You turn on the news. You see this, this thing spreading across our nation, across our communities, across our cities. Jesus says, I am in you. And because I am in you, you will have peace. Not you might have it. You will have peace. Because who is peace? God himself, right? Jesus Christ is peace. The Holy Spirit that now lives in us is peace. And then what's he say? How appropriate. God knew that when he impressed on me to preach this message months and months ago, that we'd be right in the middle of what we're going through and this verse would be the key verse that we're looking at today in this world. You're going to have trouble. But take heart, church. I've overcome the world. Take heart. I have overcome the world. That's the peace that Jesus brings. So as we look at this, One of the things we see is that our Father gives us confidence to overcome. We can make it through this. Make it through. One way or another, we are going to make it through this. You can either choose the peace of God or you can choose to freak out and go buy all the toilet paper. I can't believe I just said that live. You can choose to freak out or you can choose to have peace in the midst of this storm that we find ourselves in. In the midst of trouble, there is peace. In the midst of heartache, there is joy. In the midst of confusion, there's truth. 
<laughs> There's truth because the truth is this, Jesus. In the midst of this virus where we find ourselves right now, today, there is Jesus. Let me ask you a question. How do we respond to such an incredible, loving, faithful God? Today, we need to be the church more than ever. We need to look for opportunities. Opportunities to share Christ. What this world needs now is not an anti-venom, an antivirus. What the church needs now, what the world needs now is Jesus Christ. So let me encourage you, church, to look for ways to be Christ to the people that you find yourself in contact with, the people that you find yourself around, the people that are hurting, the people that are lonely, the people that are freaking out. Be the church. Be who you're called to be. And if any, anybody here needs to work through that, you need someone to share Christ with you, please call, call our church office. Call and talk to us. We will share Jesus with you. Amen? Amen. Be the church.